on that um, coming to India 2-1 is from where you were halfway through does it feel like a good result or a bit of a what could have been from halfway through, um, I think it's a, a good result if you take in the last two test matches. But what we set out to achieve here, um, we weren't quite able to achieve that. And you can pin it back to Delhi, where we were in control of that game, and, and then we lost those eight wickets, and um, the whole series pretty much shifted there. Um, really impressed with the way that the players rebounded after that little break and reset themselves. And indoor was, is impressive, and I felt like this game um, was another pre impressive performance, albeit it didn't really go anywhere. Um, and, and sometimes the surface does dictate how the game pans out. How will you sort of reflect on that hour in Delhi? Will it sting for a while, just knowing what the potential could have been? It's a proud group, and, and they'll see it as a missed opportunity. Not many teams come here and get the opportunity um, like what, that was presented in Delhi. And if it had been one all there, who knows where the series goes from there as well. So there's a lot of what-ifs around that. But um, we could only control what we did moving forward. And in the last two test matches, we put together some, some solid performances. How different is it going to be when you're playing with the over? It'll be a lot different. Yeah. <laughs> we we go to England. Yeah. We're, we're yeah. super excited about that. And if you look at what we embarked upon um, at the start of Pakistan, into Sri Lanka, into India, um, we set that as three series in the subcontinent. And we come away from that with three wins, three losses and, and three draws. Um, and and that, that's a pretty tough World Test Championship cycle. So to finish on top of the table uh, with that um, on the calendar is pretty impressive. And, and it's a world number one team still. So we're pretty proud of what the group's been able to achieve. However, in saying that, we didn't achieve what we wanted to here. What have you decided with you so far? I know it's a bit of a way off, but I imagine you're already thinking about it in terms of prep. Will it, will it look similar to, to this series, no tour game, um, that, that kind of thing? Yeah, it'll be squeezed. Um, it'll be straight on, the, pretty much on the back of the IPL. So we'll head to England with pr plenty of time to prepare over there. Um, we've got things that are almost in place um, for that. Um, so yeah, we'll be well prepared for that series. Is there any concern that the end of that IPL um, you know, if guys do make that IPL final, I think it might be a week or something like that. Is that, is that a concern? That's the way of modern cricket, uh, dealing with short turnarounds, uh, shifting from format to format. And the players know what they're in for when they're shifting from format to format, and they're, they're pretty good at it, um, in all honesty. With all due respect to sensitivities around the subject, do you know who who's in your, in your um, squad for the, for the one day? Has you had any indication yet about that? Uh, yeah, we have. Yeah, Pat won't be coming back over, so he'll still be taking care of what's happening back home. So okay. our thoughts are with Pat and his family yeah. as they go through that grieving process. And so, do you know yet who captains the Monday team? Uh, we'll discuss that um, in the coming days. Um, so we'll, we'll be clear on the captain going into the first game. How just how hard has selection been here? You've ended up with two completely different openers. You had the captain go back. Obviously, the tricky thing with. Travis had at the beginning, as a series as a whole, has selection been particularly difficult? It's been difficult. We had some injured players as well um, that were almost close to go. So you've always got to make a decision on how they come back into the team and are they ready uh, on the back of injury. And unfortunately, obviously, Paddy had to go home and deal with what he dealt with. Um, and then David Warner, um, you know, three innings is into the series, cops that blow and uh, he's on his way home. So that, that happens in certain periods of time. We've dealt with injuries before. Um, with feels like we've got really good depth to cover that. Um, and we saw, you know, Hetty going to the top of the order looked really impress impressive in the subcontinent. We saw Todd Murphy and Matt Coombe get their opportunities, Cameron Green's first hundred. So there's a lot of positives that, that come out of the people who were selected. I'm not sure if you heard it or not, but Raul Drava during the um, presentation on the ground just really had praise on the, the spinners coming over here and just said it was, yeah, probably some of the best spin spinners that have come over here in, in recent times. Yeah, that's a nice, nice yeah. little uh, reflection from, from Raul. Um, two debutantes held their own against the quality attack and a quality batting unit. So we're really impressed with Todd Murphy and Matt Coonham and, and Nathan Lyon. Wow, just keeps going from strength to strength. And it was only yesterday that he went to 400 wickets and he's now approaching 500. Most wickets um, by any international player coming to India. Um, really impressive CV um, that he's building and he's got plenty left. So he, he was able to lead the charge with those younger spinners as well. So it's always nice having a, a senior spinner in there uh, controlling the attack the way that Nathan does. Um, you've got in Nathan Busman, a few of the guys who are in that sort of mid-30s bracket and still performing really strongly, because that's you know that's one group. But then also there's the conversation around Davy, and um, are you going to have a bit of time to talk to him between now and England about what the next few months looks like? Oh, we're continually talking with our senior players with what they got coming up and and juggling the schedule that, that is in front of us. And, and next year, I think that you know we're, we're staring down 274 days on the road. I think it's 144 for the red ball team, 130 for the white ball team. So there's going to be some 
you know, some give and take within that. Um, but yeah, as I said, we've got some great depth. We've got coverage in all areas and we're always talking to our senior players with, with, with where they're at um, in regards to their careers. Josh Hazelwood had to go home again. Obviously, you don't know how much you would have played if you'd stayed. But looking at what you've got and where you're playing the next level of Test cricket, are you going to look at are you going to look at his situation quite closely? Obviously, he hasn't been able to string Test matches together for the last couple of years. Yeah, injuries are unfortunate, and it's part of fast bowling. So, two separate injuries: the side injuries and the Achilles injury. So, um, when he does come back, though, what we saw in Sydney, he's still world class and the top of his game. So. It'll be, I think Scott Boland adds to the depth there. We've got Lance Morris, uh, unfortunately, Jai Richardson, who's someone of, of great interest as well, um, you know, suffered an injury recently as well. But we feel as though those fast bowlers as a collective can, can help each other navigate through what the future tour programs hold. Any updates on Wizzy and that leg? Yeah, so lower leg injury um, scans are pretty positive. Um, he, was, he would have been able to bat today. We, we put him down the order, so he gets some time to, to rest up now and look forward to the World Test Championship. So I'm sure there'll be a bit of rehabilitation around that, but, but at this stage, nothing structural or nothing that will like keep him out for long. Just picking up on, um, on Kuhneman and, and Murphy, how do you reflect on how they got here from? Because they haven't played much state cricket, they haven't participated in the international, much international cricket. Is there something that could have been done differently in the, you know, to get them more prepared, to, to make them even more potent? Oh, we've got MRF programs where you know, Todd Murphy's been involved in. Um, Matty Koonman went on the A series to Sri Lanka, stayed behind and um, was with the, the main tour group for, for that series as well. So there's always an investment in those young spinners. Unfortunately, when you become the second and third spinner for, for your country, um, and in particular a certain type of spinner, it's pretty different to what they're expected to do in Australia. Um, so we felt in, in Todd Murphy, he's got the skill set to be able to do that. So it's really picking the skill set that matches up to these conditions. And we've seen that with plenty of other countries picking spinners out. And I think Dan Vittori got picked after a couple of first class games as well. So it's not uncommon for, for a second and third spinner to, to come in that way. So how do you how do you look after Todd then? You know, he might, there might not be another Asian tour for, for a few years now. And obviously you've identified him as someone who's probably next in line with Nate. How do you look after him over the next couple of years? We'll go back and hopefully play some state cricket for yeah. Victoria. Um, but there's A programs. I think that's that's the positive around the A program. That, that'll get off the off the ground again on the back of COVID. Um, so there'll be an investment there in our players. But yeah, essentially state cricket is a great you know, grounding for, for anyone to develop their skills. And he's held his own at state level, held his own at international level. I think Virat Kohli four times in your first tour. Pretty impressive. Um, so everyone was worried about the depth of spinners outside Nathan Lyon. It feels as though we've got some logical replacements now and some depth in that area. Andrew, just to follow up on Dave, would you like to, I suppose, avoid a scenario where someone who's had a long test career with as great a performance as he's had, you know, may find himself in a squad and out of a team on a tour? Like you'd like to see him continue to play when he's when he's fit and, and finish on his terms? Yeah, I think you, you work through that conversation and how each player finishes is always differently. Some some want to go out um, in a certain way and, and others are, are okay with potentially being dropped out of side. So, um, but at the moment, you know, Dave's fully in our plans for the World Test Championship. He's coming back for the one-day series. He's recovered from his injury there. So we'll see Dave back in the Australian colours on, on the 17th and we'll go from there. And just one on um, England, obviously, you've got you know the World Test Championship against India and then you've got that Ashes series. The world has seen very transparently the way England play. Does having had that amount of sight or of it help in any way for what you what you get in England later this year? Definitely helps having an understanding of your opposition. How we deal with what they present us with is is, is another thing um, we've seen here. We've dealt with different conditions and different opponents, and you know the pressure they'll put us under is is, is no doubt. You know they'll play a fast forward style of game. Um, we tend to like to to play. Um, different gears um, so yeah it'll be I suppose a, a clash of two different styles which I think is going to incite, excite everyone um, we've got a few one days to go first world test championship in India um, at the Oval so we're looking forward to that.